Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. Over the last few segments, we've been talking about property, plant, and equipment, PP&E, and we've been focusing on what kind of costs can be capitalized, debited into our asset accounts, instead of expensed, debited into an expense account. The basic rule of thumb we've discussed is everything we spend getting that asset ready to use, we can capitalize. Everything else has to be expensed. Now we've talked about some specific issues that maybe are a little more challenging than that rule of thumb allows. That is interest expense, how much of that can be capitalized, if any. And then talking a little bit about basket purchases that are a little bit different in how we pay for them and how they're lumped together. And then talking about what happens with subsequent costs. So all of this discussion has been around building up our pp e accounts and creating this historical cost or original value. Now it's time to talk about the flip side. What do we do when we're ready to dispose of the asset? Basically, the rule here is that when property, plant, and equipment is eliminated or disposed of, we have to get it off of our books and everything related to that asset off of our books, which means there's two pieces to this. There's anything that we've capitalized and all of our depreciation has to come off of our books too. We don't want anything in our accumulated depreciation account that isn't still there. We don't want that reducing the value of our remaining assets by having this big contra asset that relates to nothing. So in our journal entry, to show that we've gotten rid of this asset, we're gonna credit away the asset value, we're gonna debit away the accumulated depreciation, then the difference between what we're getting rid of and what we might get, whether it's cash or another piece of equipment if we're doing a swap or an exchange, any difference becomes a gain or a loss on disposal. And that's really it. It's pretty straightforward to record disposals, especially if we're just talking about selling it off or just junking it. Let's take a look at an example of this. This is Harding LLC and Harding has decided to get rid of one of its machines. The machine cost a million dollars when they bought it six years ago. At the time they thought they could use it for nine years and then sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. But by the end of this year, year six from the time we bought the asset, they realize it's better off to just sell this machine for 350000 than trying to keep it in good form, keep it producing for the next th three years. So they've decided to sell it. And we want to make the journal entry, yes, the journal entry, to show the sale. So again, our rule here is we have to get rid of the asset and the accumulated depreciation. Now I know the asset value. I paid a million dollars for it. What I don't know is my accumulated depreciation. So I have to figure that out before I can do this journal entry. We haven't talked much about depreciation yet. We will. It's actually our next topic coming up once we finish discussing disposals. So for now we're just going to use basic straight line. And you probably remember that depreciation expense under straight line we take the historical cost or the capitalized amount minus what we think the salvage value is going to be and we divide by the estimated life in years. So in this case our historical cost was the one million dollars we paid for it. We're not given any other information about installation or trial runs or anything so we'll just stick with that. Salvage value we originally thought it would be a hundred thousand dollars and the useful life was nine years. So 900,000 divided by nine, $100,000 a year. That's my depreciation expense. I don't need depreciation expense. I need accumulated depreciation. Well, I would have added this much into my accumulated depreciation each year for six years. So if I multiply that by the six years, I have 600,000 in my accumulated depreciation for this asset. So if I get rid of the asset, I get rid of the million dollars, I've also got to get rid of the 600,000 so that it doesn't keep reducing my total assets when there's no asset there for it to offset, right? Otherwise it's just this negative drops total asset value with no positive to offset it. If we're going to sell this off, then we have cash coming in and we were told it was 350,000 was what we were offered. Accumulated depreciation, we've got to get rid of that. It's got a credit balance, so if I want to get rid of it, I'll debit that account for 600000 And then I'll credit the asset. And this was a machine, so I'm going to call it machine. But if you want to call it PP&E or equipment, that's fine too. 
Every company is going to have its own convention for that. And now I need to know, do I need a gain or a loss to make this balance? Well, in this case, I need a debit to make this balance. And now the question is, is it a gain if you have a debit or a loss if you have a debit? Well, let's see. Gain or loss, that affects equity. Equity is a credit account. So if I've got a loss, it's working like an expense. That's a debit. And I've got a debit here. So it must be a loss on sale. And if we've been able to sell it for 500000 I'd have a gain because it would have sold it for more than I thought it was worth. So I would have shown a credit. I would have needed a credit to make it balance, and that would have given me a gain. This is the sale of machine. And that's it. That's all we're going to put in there. You can put in more details if you want to, but just make sure you don't leave it naked. All right, next example. What if instead of selling it, what if management decides, you know what, let's just junk her, because we can't find someone we don't like to sell it to. I'm sorry, that story about that car always just gets me chuckling. Anyway, um, now I told that story. I've lost my train of thought. Hold on. Right, so we're just going to junk it and take a tax break. And that happens quite a bit. If I can't get a good sales price, if, if they were only offering me $100,000 and I can junk it and get a 30% tax bump or you know tax savings, I may actually be better off junking it and taking the tax break than I would be selling it. So sometimes for tax purposes, this is worth it. So this is an abandonment. And in this case, I'm getting nothing. So I'm going to get rid of the machine. That's my credit. I'm going to get rid of accumulated depreciation, which we already calculated, so we won't do it again. And then obviously I have a loss because I need a debit. to make it balance. Abandoned machine. And took the loss. And that happens. If I can't find a buyer, just need it out of the warehouse, or it's better to sell it for scrap metal or whatever than try to find a real buyer, then I may see these. You'll notice too that with my gains and losses, I'm showing this is a gain or loss on sale, gain or loss on abandonment. Some companies will just show it as a gain or loss on disposal so that it's generic, so that their competitors don't know whether they were junking or selling or getting rid of equipment in another way. But it's usually more beneficial to investors to provide. This was this kind of a disposal. The next kind of disposal is a little bit more involved, and that's an exchange. Exchanging property plant equipment means that instead of just selling it and walking with cash or abandoning it and walking away with nothing, I swap. And the most common kind of swap is if I go into a dealership and they say, hey, we'll take that as a trade-in. So that's the example that we're going to use. But this could easily be two companies that say, hey, you've got that machine. I need it. You've got a machine that I need. Let's just swap these machines. So the entries are a little bit different for an exchange than they are for a sale or an abandonment. It all comes down to two big questions, what these journal entries will look like. First, is there a gain or loss on the exchange? Are we making money? or are we losing money on this exchange? The way we decide whether or not to gain or loss is we look at what it's worth to sell now versus what we show it's worth on our books. What's its carrying value? Meaning the historical cost or the capitalized amount minus the accumulated depreciation. If we show a loss, then we record that loss immediately. If there's a gain, then we move on to the second question here, and that is, does the exchange have commercial substance? Commercial substance means it would substantially change the nature of my business to make this exchange. So an example of this would be if I take an old machine that makes six units an hour and I exchange it for a new machine that makes 600,000 units an hour, my business is substantially different, hopefully substantially better. But it just means it's substantially different. That's commercial substance. If I have one delivery truck and I exchange it for a new delivery truck, then there's probably no substance there because I can't really go any faster and I probably can't haul all that much more in that delivery truck. So really nothing's changed. I've got a newer model. It saves me some money in repairs, but eh, really nothing's changed. That lacks substance. If it has substance or if cash is involved, then I get to recognize the gain right away. So again, if it's a loss, I have to show the loss right now. 
if it's a gain with substance or with cash involved as part of this exchange, then I show that gain immediately. If on the flip side, there's no cash and it doesn't have substance, then I don't get to show a gain at all. It just kind of disappears. To illustrate this, let's take another look at our example for Harding Company. And if you remember, this was the machine that cost us a million dollars six years ago. We decided at that time that we could sell it off for $100,000 uh, after a nine year useful life. Since it's been six years, we've already calculated that we have $600,000 of accumulated depreciation on this asset. This time, instead of selling or abandoning the old machine, we have an opportunity to swap it. Basically, we have found another company that is probably in some kind of a cash crunch, can't buy a new machine, and will make do with an older model in exchange for a piece of land that they own that we would like. And so we decided that we will swap them this older machine that they need for the land that we would like to have. So the land is currently valued at 375,000. That's what a realtor has gone through and said this land is worth. So we're really excited because we could only sell the asset, if you remember, for $350,000. So this is our market value of our machine. And we're gonna get this land worth 375. So this is a great deal. We'd like to do it. So how do we do that? Well, step number one, is to decide whether there's a gain or a loss. And the way that we decide on gain versus loss is we look at the fair value of the asset, not the asset we're getting, but the asset we are getting rid of versus the book value of that asset. Now we know the fair value of the asset that was given to us. We just talked about it. It's the 350,000 that we can sell it for on the open market. The book value will be historical cost, which was a million dollars, minus the accumulated depreciation, which is $600,000. We calculated earlier. So we have a $400,000 book value. So in this case, we think it's worth on our books 400,000. We can only sell it for 350. So we take the 350 minus the 400,000, that gives us a negative $50,000. So we have a loss. Now we move on to step number two, and that is to determine the historical cost or the capitalized amount of the new asset. In this case, that's that small piece of land that we are going to get. And we don't care what the market value is of the land. Remember, what we capitalize as the value of a new asset on our books is what we pay for the asset. So if there's a loss up here, then we record the historical cost of the new asset, the land, as the fair value of the old asset. In this case, the machine, $350,000. And once I know that, then I can move on to step three, which is my journal entry. So I'll debit land for this value, 350,000. I've got to get rid of the accumulated depreciation on that old machine that I don't own anymore. And then I'll get the machine off of my books. That was a million dollars is was the original amount that we paid for it. And that of course doesn't balance. We're $50,000 off. That's because under gap, I have to show this loss. So I'm going to debit $50,000 and call it a loss on exchange Just to record the exchange. Of a machine for land at a loss. And again, I don't care if there's commercial substance, if there's a loss. With a loss, commercial substance is irrelevant. Commercial substance only matters if there's a gain. We talked about a lot of stuff with disposal. Remember, the key concept here is that I've got to get rid of everything associated with that asset when I get rid of it. So the historical cost has got to go and the accumulated depreciation has got to go. The rest depends on what assets 
I'm getting in. And so far we've looked at a sale, we've looked at abandonment where I get no assets, and we've looked at an exchange with a loss. We still need to take a look at what happens when I have a gain when I do an exchange. And we'll talk about that next time. I'll see you then.